for Samia. Dead? You guys digging for treasure? Something like that. That is incredible. What was it? Yeah, it's my first time in, uh, in Indonesia at all, and I've heard a lot uh, about Indonesia, of course, and uh, uh, actually my ex-girlfriend, uh, uh, her parents are from uh, uh, Java and um, uh, Maluku, so I know a little bit about Indonesia, but it's the first time to actually be here. Yeah, I really, really like the World Cinema Week. It's uh, uh, like a, this. Uh, it's a very big event. It has like huge amount of movies, uh, very high quality movies. So very honored to be a part of that with Molo. Yeah, oh, it's like part of it. It's been uh, it's been very overwhelming, <laughs> basically. Yeah, I was m very impressed with like traffic. Just goes everywhere. So you would expect like. Uh, accidents everywhere but it's like this organized chaos which is really nice uh, I think people are very open very friendly so I've been feeling very welcome uh, enjoying the Indonesian food as well uh, which I like very much like rendang uh, I had sate, kambing uh, and uh, kupuk all of that so yeah in, in Dutch you would say uh, moloch uh, or Molok in uh, Molok, the Americans say Molok, I think. So, but whichever way works for you. Yeah, um, so I've, I've always loved horror and I, I grew up reading a lot of horror stories from the 19th, mid 19th century. Uh, so, Gothic horror stories, like classic ghost stories in in these huge houses uh, from Edgar Allan Poe, for example, or Bram Stoker, who wrote Dr Dracula. And um, that was kind of my first contact with uh, horror stories. I, I think Moloch originated uh, basically in um, uh, partially in Dutch history. So we have actually the bog bodies that you see in the film. Uh, they are uh, people who have ended up uh, in, the, in the swamps and their bodies have been conserved like perfectly well. So you can still see their skin and their features after thousands of years being in the, in the water. Uh, and uh, 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 another part of it is the Witte uh, uh, we call it. Well, part, part of it was that it's a very complex story. So we wanted to, uh, um, yeah, tell the story in a way that people wouldn't predict as much what the ending would be. But then again, we didn't want to confuse people too much because there's lots of moving parts in there and we kind of wanted to align them in the right way. So uh, that was mainly a challenge also in the writing and it kept changing until the last moment. Um, and another part of it was, I guess, um, COVID. We had lockdown and uh, uh, we had curfew, so you couldn't go out on the streets af after, I think, six in the evening. Um, and it made it very difficult. And for example, one of the uh, actors uh, that we cast from Denmark, he couldn't come. And so we had to recast and then we had to rewrite based on, on uh, who he was as an actor. So uh, uh, everything I think, kept changing um, until the last minute. Yeah, no, they're not, not popular at all. <laughs> yeah. No, it's not like, like in Indonesia, uh, where, where I think there's a huge fan base already for, for uh, horror and ghost stories. In the Netherlands, it's not a big thing. And we actually, in the last I don't know, 60 years that we've been making films, we've made a dozen horror films. And most of them are more sort of slasher oriented. So you'll have maybe two or three horror films that are like supernatural in the way that Moloch is uh, supernatural. Uh, so it's quite rare to get the opportunity to make horror and uh, the audience isn't used to horror uh, from the Netherlands. So you have to kind of win them over a little bit. 
So I guess my message to uh, like filmmakers uh, just starting out would be that you have to hang in there and um, you have to be not afraid to uh, go look for your boundaries. Like where is your comfort zone and how do you step outside of that comfort zone? Because I think that's where uh, you really find yourself creatively.